Right, morning all, afternoon, good afternoon. Um, I'm going to go through making a Flemish twist string for a long bow that I'm working on at the moment. Um, the bow is 40 pounds or mid 40 pounds, so um, we're doing a 12 strand string. Um, so that's what I usually run on pretty much all of my bows now. Um, I'll go through my string jig, the string jig I use. Um, it's probably one of the easiest ones that there is to use. Um, and I'll go through the stuff that you need to make the string itself. So um, measuring tape is super, super handy. Grab that out as well. Um, measuring tape with inches. Right, so basics for making said string. This is the jig itself. Um, you need these two pieces. These outer uh, screws are eight inches apart. This one here is a relief screw on the working end. This is the working end of the jig. This is the stationary end. You won't really do anything with this end. Um, but you need to know the spacing. These are eight inches apart. Um, that gives you enough material to tie your loops. So the loops get tied between these. You'll see that shortly. Some clamps to clamp this onto my runner. I'm just using a long piece of stud runner. Um, measuring tape, a sharp knife, string material, and I've pre-cut some uh, little uh, loop pads. So they're going to be pads for my loops. I um, actually need another pair of them, so I've got to cut another pair. So I'll get you guys set up on my little makeshift jig here and get into doing the string itself. Right, so we're on and on. Right, um, I'll just quickly this is my big ruler. I'll just quickly cut some more loop pads. So I'm just going to take the working end of the um, yeah, the working end of the string down to the 20 inch string mark on my ruler here and then at the end I'll come to the end and just trim him off. Nice sharp knife really helps. But 20 inches, 10 inches when you fold it in half. So these are 10 inches long now and then we'll just trim it. So I've got two two bundles of two strands extra. So my, my one of my loops is going to be 16 strands. The other loop um, which we'll get to is going to be really really tiny and then fold back on itself so you don't need extra string pad in that one. Um, we'll get the jig set up. So working end I'll put with the camera so that you guys can see. We just clamp it on to your table, your bench, whatever you're using. Um, I'm just going to clamp it onto this runner, this piece of um, stud that I use. Now, measuring tape. So, we've got the back loop, or the uh, back pin, this one, and then we have the second inner pin. This pin's your working pin. This is what you're going to use when you're doing your twists. This one is what sets this, the length of the string. So, I'm going to put my tape measure on here as a start, and I'll run it down, and I'm going to tie this, so I'll set that up. Now, because I'm using D97, D97 doesn't stretch um, a, a hell of a lot once you get the string set, so it's, um, I'm going to make the string, so from inner peg here to the inner peg on the other end is going to be 73 inches. only one inch shorter than the string and then why I do that is because um, D97 doesn't stretch anywhere near as much so once I make the string I can use the loop uh, make I use um sorry the twists in the string to control brace height and one inch short works really well so I'll just put a little clove hitch on there and now I'll run out my string my strands so now I'm going outer peg to outer peg, so I've just run, run one um, run down. So what I'm making is essentially one of the bundles for the string on this side, and one of the bundles for the string on this side. So you can see, they actually run all the way down to the other end. It's not going to focus, but they run down to the other end and then onto that, um, around those pegs. So I'm just going to continue. So I need six on each side, 12 total. So there's two, and two, three, 
and three. Actually, given this is a 45 pound bow, I think I'll only do an eight strand string because it just doesn't need it. It's a waste of D97 to do more. So I've got four strands on this side, four strands on this side. So there's my two string bundles. So I'm going to cut them. back here so we'll just cut them off we'll pull that string out we don't need it now these little frayed ends don't really matter you can cut them and neaten them up if you want to but it doesn't really matter right this string material is pretty waxy as it is you don't really need a lot of wax in this stuff um, some string materials you do need a little bit of wax in so I'm gonna get you guys right in over the top of what I'm doing here now so you can really see so I like to come down uh, about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch. And then what I do is I pre-twist these in and I'm pre-twisting them that way. So I'm twisting them that way. So I'm rolling, spinning my fingers, holding my left hand and twisting the string up with my right hand. Um, I'm gonna use a right-handed twist with a left-handed cross. So this is gonna be the, the bigger end bigger loop end because I'm putting the pads in so this is going to be for my top knock uh, on the bow. So I'll twist these ones in, get some pre-twists in this uh, loop section. Twist them up and then I'll pull them a little bit just to sort of seat them in the, the string itself. Alright so now I've got my double bundles. This is where a Flemish twist comes in. So I've gone right side over over the top of left side, so it's a left-handed cross. Then what we want to do is twist both bundles the same direction. So I'm twisting them both that way, and then I cross them the other way. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 crosses. So I've crossed six times. That's roughly how big my loop's going to be right there. Um, I might put just two more in it because the bow is fairly big. Now I'm going to bring it down to the other end. So pinching this. And separating this we pop it off but we want to keep our keep our bundles separate back around the working peg left hand side goes to left hand side right hand side goes to right hand side and then we twist them in so same right handed twist so your fingers have just got to do one thing so now they're twisted in and then we cross the same way that left handed cross I'm just working back the other way so still a right handed twist and a left handed cross and we've just got to cross these, twist and cross these, all the way past where those ends run out into the string. So twist and cross all this up. No worries. Nearly out. Nearly run out here. And you get some little fuzzy bits, but they can be trimmed off or waxed down with some little nail scissors or just some beeswax and wax them down. I don't really worry about how my strings look too much, it's more about function. So I've gone, I've run out here, I'm just going to go a little bit past. So I've got a few crosses past. I'm at this point now. So that can just sit at the moment, it's okay to just sit there. What I'm going to do now is actually take this string off and it's going to be put on the other end on the inside peg, the inner peg. So I've actually swapped the string over. So now I've got some 
It's a working end again, back up this end. And I've got the loop that I just tied at that far end. I do have a separate little clamp, but these little hand clamps are really handy. What I'm going to do is just clamp off this work that I've done at this end so I can't unravel it as we go. So it's one of these little hand clamps, it's super handy. And then the next thing I'm going to do is actually take out all of those twists. So see all those twists as I slide my hand back, they're all coming out. And then I get my two bundles. So I've got my two bundles back again. And that's really important for doing this second end of the string. Uh, it makes things much, much easier to work with because the string won't get all twisted up. So now all I've got to do is cut this. And then repeat the process. Except this time, I'm just going to make a small very very small loop and you'll see why shortly so there's 10 10 crosses that's going to make me a very very small little loop and that's what I want I'll feed them back in and tie them up Sorry about the background noise, the kids are having a right good time over there. So nearly, nearly running up. Just about to run out here. Just gonna go about 10 crosses or so past where I've run out of that string there. Right, so now we can pop that off that peg. Just pops off that peg. Now, next thing I need to do in this string, I'll just move around here, is actually get rid of all those um those crosses I've put in this section of string here so all these crosses doing this up has twisted up twisted up the far end of the string before that clamp so I need to get rid of those so what I'm going to do is just spin the string in my hand like this I just spin the string I'm spinning towards myself now because I want to do the string up shorter slightly shorter I'm trying to get rid of all those crosses so once you get to a point, they'll all disappear and the string will actually start to shorten. At this point now, I'm about ready to fit it to the string. So this tiny little loop, what I'm actually going to do is feed my string back through. And this is now going to be the bottom loop on the, bow, uh, on the bow itself. So that little sliding loop is going to be the bottom loop on the bow and that's what's going to be uh, keeping it on the, on the bow itself. Take that off, I'll take this off, take the guys off there, I'll just set you up here. So we've got the bow, this is the bow itself, this lovely English longbow. Get the string to it and get the brace height set. So this bow has side knocks, that's why I chose to do the loops how I did them. 
Top knock goes all the way down. Bottom knock will fit onto the bow. I think I'll put a few too many twists in. So I'm just going to untwist a little bit just to get myself enough length to get that on the bow without stretching out that top loop too much. I'll just get it on the bow. I've got it the wrong way. 